my name is Daryl Rader, and today I'd like to show you how to add icons to your Lotus Connection communities. There's four basic steps that we'll cover. So first is creating your icon image. Second, uploading your icon image. Third, add the icon image to a wiki page. And then finally, copying you to your overview page. So I divided it up into those four sections, and this will take about 10 to 15 minutes, but hopefully by the end you'll see how easy this is to do. So before we get started, just uh, make sure that you have the tools, and, and so everybody should have access to these tools. The first is a way to create your icon. I use Lotus Symphony and Paint. The second is a uh, screen capture tool that allows you to crop uh, based on a specific or a set ratio. And so I have used uh, Picasso, again, lots of other tools out there that you can use. You also need a Lotus Connection community that you're an owner uh, because it's important. You're going to need to edit your overview section, so uh, you have to be an owner to be able to do that. You'll need a blog so that we have a place to store your image, a wiki, uh, which is the place that we'll build the overview page, and then lastly, a URL shortener like uh, Bitly or there's IBM URL shorteners. Um, I've chosen Bitly just because it creates the shortest URLs that I've seen, and this allows you to create more icons on an overview page. Now, if you only need two or three icons, you probably don't need the URL shortener. All right, so the first step is actually to build uh, the icon. So your icon is going to have three different parts. Um, it's going to have a background image. It's going to have uh, some image or image that's going to go on top of the background. And then it's going to have some text. So it's all three going to be captured uh, as the icon. Now, I've chosen here, I've chosen a rounded uh, rectangle as the shape. And you know you don't have to do it like I've done it, but I'll just show you. I've used uh, 1.8 by uh, width by 1.7 uh, Height. And again, that's, that's what I've chosen. And I do think it's important that you keep it uh, consistent so that your icons are you know, next to each other that look the same and kind of have the same look and feel. Now, the second thing is, is having an image. So here's an image that I've built. Um, you, know, you can use the standard uh, images from Symphony. They have a lot of great images. Uh, there's also free images out there. Just make sure you uh, adhere to any licensing. Uh, associate with those images. Now the third thing is your text. And so you know, the text that I've chosen is Arial. I use 22 size. But again, try and be as consistent as you can. And you'll want to make sure that you, know, you can try different things out here. Now, so what I usually do is I put the text right underneath it. And I try and you know, center it. I'm not trying to be exact here, but you know, I center it underneath the uh, background. And then I take the image and I put it on top. But as long as it all fits in the background image, uh, you're good to go. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is actually capture that. So here's where the screen capturing tool comes in. So I'll do a print screen here. Picasso comes up and allows me to crop it. And um, so Picasso has a nice feature where you can actually create a custom aspect ratio. And we're going to use 80 by 110. So that's very important if you're going to uh, try and copy what we've done. Uh, you know, pick a scale and, and use that consistently. So 80 by 110 is our scale. Let me come in here. And you want to have it tied on the top and the two sides. Uh, and then leave white space at the bottom, because you'll have some icons that have two rows of text here. Now, once you do that, you just apply. There's the image of your icon. Now, come over here and we'll save it. And I usually just name it the same as what's on the icon, so icon library. And then once I do that, I'm going to come and make sure it's the right size, because you know, obviously, if I'm doing a print screen, uh, may not be the right size. So again, I'm wanting it to be 80 by 110. And you can see here the dimensions are not. So I'm going to edit it in paint. Just is an easy tool to use. You come over here, go to resize. And since I know exactly what ratio I want, I want to have 80 by 110. I'm going to save it. 
And that's all there is to building the icon. Now, once I've built the icon, now I want to upload it because I have to make it so that I can attach a URL to it. And so what I wanted to show you here is how we've used the blog within Connections. So, so the blog within Connections is, is a place that you know, a lot of people don't know, but you can store images and it's not out in the open. And, and it's kind of a nice way to do it. So let me just show you how to do that. So if you go to your blog and you go up here and press New Entry, you're actually not going to create a blog entry, but you're going to go up here and there's a File Upload section. So it's kind of a hidden place. And then I usually create a folder called Icon Images. And here you'll see I've got some existing images, each with a URL associated with them. You see I hover over on the bottom, you see the URL. And I'm going to go grab this new one that we just built and just grab it out of that folder and upload it. And you'll see here's the URL that, that, it's, that it's giving. Now, I'm going to actually copy that into my clipboard here, and I'm going to use it here in a second. But if you're doing this with multiple icons, you want to keep this page up or keep whatever page up so that you, know, you can access it when you're actually building out your wiki. Okay, but I'm, we're just going to add one, so I'm going to copy this into my clipboard. Now, the next step is to actually go in and create a mock-up page or staging page in your wiki. So uh, if you come in here and you edit your wiki page, now the nice thing is you actually, they've got HTML editors. You don't need to know HTML to be able to do this. So you come in here, and we're going to create, add this icon. I'm going to come in and get it out of my clipboard, and you see how long this is. And I'm going to come in here and adding it to my page. Now, once I've added this, right, so now all I have is an image, what I want to do is, is then also associate a URL with it. Now, with what, what I've got here is I've created a page on my wiki called Icon Library, and I'm going to actually end up coming back and building this out. But I'm going to take this URL here that's associated with Icon Library, and I'm going to go back into my wiki, and I'm going to come in here and associate that URL. So I'm going to come up here. There's a edit link, and I'm going to put that URL right up here. And when I say OK, then I've got a URL associated with it. Now, at this point, those URLs are pretty long, so I'm going to show you quickly how to come back and, and make both of those short URLs using a URL shortener. So I'm going to come over here, and let's start with the, uh, the link associated with it, the target link. And I click on this. You'll see it comes up. Here's, here's this long URL associated with it. I'm going to put that into my clipboard, and I'm going to bring up a URL shortener. And again, you can use any one you like. Most of them allow you to just put in a long URL and say shorten. And here's the URL that it gave me. I'm going to copy it, which goes into my clipboard, and come back here and just paste. And you'll see I'm just putting a new URL, which is shortened, and associating with that uh, icon. Now, the next thing I want to do is shorten the image. Remember our, our URL that we put in for the image. And again, same type of thing. I'm going to right mouse button on that and say image properties. And you see here, here's the long URL. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go into my URL shortener and put the long URL, shorten it, and copy it back into my clipboard. Come back here. And now I've got a, a short URL associated with both the image and the target. And that is building an icon on my wiki page. Now let me show you real quick what this looks like. If you look at the HTML, this is what this ends up looking like. So here's my target URL that I just shortened. And then here is my URL for my image. And that's what you want to, you want to make it look like. Um, you know, again, trying to, so that you can add more and more uh, icons to the same page. It's really short and easy. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to go back and, and just save this now. And my staging area is built. And you can see here, um, I could click on it and I could go to the uh, page that I wanted to go to. So here's my icon library page. But what I want to do next is the final step, which is actually adding this or creating this uh, um, you know, same staging area on my overview page. So all I do to do that is I highlight it and I put it into my clipboard, go to my overview section, and I come over here and now community actions, edit community, and I come into my description section and paste my icon that now has both the image and the URL behind it. And if I save it, you'll see it comes up on my overview section and anybody coming into my community can now click on this and go directly into my icon library which at one time or soon in the future will have multiple icons in it. All right, so that's about it. Um, you know, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to contact me. It's Daryl Rader, that's drader at us.ibm.com. Thank you very much.